Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, and this is a continuation to the video I previously uploaded. I decided to separate this content as the previous video was becoming a little bit too long, and I figured since this was a more specialized video, I might as well separate it. In that video, we reviewed the price action for April 3rd and April 6th. The focus of this video is what to do when you know or you have enough conviction behind thinking the market is just going to be choppy or it's going to pin around a certain strike price. Usually the spread that might come to mind is an iron condor. We will be looking at a calendar spread, an iron condor, and an iron butterfly. And why I choose butterflies most of the time as of lately, I did not start out this way. I used to trade a lot more calendars, but these days I'm trading a lot more butterfly spreads. So this is just a pitch of the gamma exposure, which was just one of our confluences. This was generated a week in advance before the market actually closed at this level. If you've seen the previous video, you guys know that the SPX ended up closing around 405. So the, the spreads that we will be reviewing, as I just mentioned, I will get into each of these in smaller detail as the next portion of this video was actually recorded previously. Again, it was part of the previous video. I just didn't upload it as part of that one. So this is a 4,100 calendar. This is hypothetically speaking, if you had opened it on Monday at the start of the week, it would have cost 890 bucks. And then I'm going to compare that to a calendar also targeting 4,100, but this time widening the uh, term structure. So going with from a Friday to a Friday, and then we have an iron condor. And then lastly, we have an uh, iron butterfly. So all of them essentially targeting 4,100. These prices were retroactively added, so I did not trade these four spreads. I decided to keep track of them or to show you guys at the end of the week different strategies you can use if you're expecting the market to be choppy. So let's just jump into the part of the video that was previously recorded. We're starting with this macro idea right here. By macro, I mean macro for us as you know day traders. SBX closed over two sigma last week the net change is going to drop. So if it moved over 13 points last week, it's going to be less than 13 points this upcoming week. Usually it has a, sig a significant drop. There's no way to have known it would have only been 20 cents without a crystal ball or being able to tell the future. But the thesis is it's going to be a, a narrow change, which means there's a ton of different trades you can run at the beginning of the week. So here are four very popular spreads. Again, I will break these down in more detail in another video, just specifically these. But we have an at the money, calendar. So the SPX opened at 4,100 as we reviewed already, and we're going with an at the money calendar spread. This is shorting the Friday expiration and buying the following Monday expiration. It costs about 890. And we see just before the close, when I took this screenshot, the SPX is right around here, but we know it ended up closing at about 4,105. So this was taken maybe 10 minutes or so before the uh, market closed. Look at it, look at the return in this trade, about 100% return, and this is the PNL. So this is opening as soon as the market opened this Monday, and you took the week off. You said you just check back in on the market on Friday. I have all this data, I have all the stats. Absolute Gex is at 4,100. You know, we closed over two sigma last week. The SPX is not going to go anywhere this week. I think it's just going to be a doji. How do you capitalize on that trade? Boom, a little bit of a drawdown right here. Nothing too bad. What was the drawdown? I believe I left it in my notes. We have about an 80 dollar drawdown. So 80 cents drawdown on this contract. So it went from $8.90 down to $8.10. Not too bad, which means you're down 80 bucks, depending on how many you ran. If you ran three of these, we'll talk about three of these in a second. Why three? But that's not too bad in terms of how much the percentual drawdown was about, we'll call it 9% drawdown before the ultimately being up about 88% return on this trade right here, just before the market closed. We jump to the next one. This is also an at the money butterfly, but just but just going with a wider term structure. So this is the following Friday. So we have, uh, this is short this Friday and then long the 14th. And then this contract costs a little bit more obviously because the back month options are gonna be a little bit more expensive. You guys can see the return and this spread never went red. So as you guys can see right here, this is opening as soon as the market opens on, uh, opening the position as soon as the market opens on the Monday. Later in the day on that Monday, it just went back to break even, but trade never went red. That's something you'll see whenever you widen your term structure. You'll generally, it has less chance of the spread going red. If you're right, obviously, this is if the market is not going anywhere, you'll you'll generally experience that. And as we continue right along, now we have the king of these types of trades. If you really think the market is not going to go anywhere, the first thing that's going to come to your mind is going to be some sort of an iron condor. You guys can see this is what an iron condor would have been. I just went with an even width of uh, 30 points on each side. Where did I get the short strikes from? This is just using the QTA buy zone and sell zone. So we have a 40-30, 41-80. So that's 40-30. Let's pull this up right here to zoom out. So what do we have is 
4030, and then we have up here uh, 4180. So you're pretty much just saying, hey, I think the SPX is going to stay within the buy zone and the sell zone because that's what the data says. We're going to stay within this region. You don't know where we're going to close, but at the start of the week, your data tells you we're going to be within here and here. Boom. So what do you do? You short that strike, you short this strike, and you go with your long strikes depending on how you know expensive you want the spread to be. This is just to sh show you guys an example. In this case here, the credit is only $517 because it is an iron condo that expires uh, five days later because, or four days later if you were opening this on the Monday, three days later in this case because it was such a short week. And obviously this was 100% return. The market closed well within the uh, region. Actually by Thursday, it was already up 90 something percent return. So this is generally where you would have closed this. As we can see right here, it, it would have taken you all day on Friday just to squeeze out those last few pennies. So you might as well close it out on the Thursday, which is the previous day. In this case here, the spread would have just dropped a little bit down. I think the max drawdown in this case would have been um, 98 bucks. So about minus 3.9% margin here. So not too bad, but you guys get the point right here. Pretty much as soon as you open it, that's generally the way iron condors go. As soon as you open it, if the market makes a big move, you're going to be uh, in trouble. And as you guys know, the market made a big move, quote unquote, big move for a weekly contract because it made this big pop right here on Monday before it came back. So that's why this iron condor would have had a drop in the PL like that. And then lastly, we would have uh, our favorite. And this is why I love the iron butterflies because as you guys can see here, same same situation, this time we're shorting the at the money ones because we don't think the market's really gonna go anywhere. This trade costs $2,900 in terms of margin. And then look at the return by Friday. So 90% return and 90% return uh, on credit by the way, but on margin that's 124% return on margin because you're making more than what you're actually risking. The max drawdown in this case was $195, again, also on Monday. So right after we opened the trade, we see that it dipped right here, and that little dip is what would have caused this trade to go red. And then after the first 45 minutes on Monday, the trade was just straight green for the whole week. So use this information. I will be referencing this in the future. Obviously, whenever we have the SPX closing over two sigma or the SPY closing over two sigma, I'm gonna run this type of strategies. When you know this type, when you have this type of edge, this is when you open up your risk. You don't go all in, obviously, but you use this type of information because we have enough to show that we're likely going to get stuck. It doesn't mean you have to hold this all the way until Friday. I'm just showing you guys the idealized type of returns. So the reason I mentioned going with about three um, on the at the money calendar is because I'm just adjusting it for 3K in max loss because the max, max loss in this is about $890. To compare it to the most expensive of the four spreads, it would have been this one, which was about 3,000. So I'm just multiplying this. If you just do the math, it ends up being about 3.3. So you multiply this by 3.3. You multiply this position by 3.3 and you get about $2,800 or so in terms of um, the adjusted profit potential, we'll call it. So $2,800, it still doesn't compare to one of these, which was $4,000. So this $2,800 is you would need three of those calendars to equate to the same amount of uh, position size as this. Guys, hopefully this one helped. I did not think I was going to go over this much in such a short week, but there was so much again to learn. We have, a, we have two examples of the opening drive at the money, a butterfly. And then we also had a directional butterfly. And then we had, uh, this was the directional butterfly. We had a directional butterfly for two days. We had an at the money fly, at the money fly at the open, as well as directional flies. And then we had a week long swing all in just these four days with a ton of information. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want information to Quantrading App, link is in the description to the website. The Discord is also, link is in the description. There is a free public section, but I'm not accessible there. I am in the premium section, so you'll find information on the website. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.